Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone, or good evening, depending on your geographic location in this planet. Uh, how everyone is doing? All good? Cool. All good. Cool. All good. Um, cool. So, do we have a note taker for today? Hey, uh, Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, I'm going to create like a custom award just for you as the best note taker in the world. <laughs> uh, cool, okay, so uh, welcome to the JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync Up of September 17, 2018. Uh, today, we, as usual, will do the run of updates. Before getting started, uh, I just want to raise attention to something that was discussed on Africa Salon as well, which is OKR planning. Um, please do read through that issue. This is not new to this team, like we have done this in the past. Uh, essentially, it's the two-step retrospective first, um, and OKRs next. Um, the, the goal is to have it done by the end of this month, so like OKRs frozen. So the sooner we start like discussing and massaging the key results, and also that we have the retrospectives out, uh, the, the better, because um, the, the rest of the team would also like to know uh, what are the plans uh, for this team before the end, like so on the 24th. And so um, essentially, if we get our ideas out there sooner, it also helps all the other working groups rely on Jet FTPS. No, my, my voice is gone again. Okay, sorry, I need to check what happened to my headphones. Um, cool, okay, so that was my quick announcement. If you have questions, definitely reach out. Uh, if you have any like really important question that you want to ask right now, just raise your hand. Um, and all right, let's go to the round of updates. Uh, I can start first. Um, my update is very simple. Came back from time off. Already tried to like pull up in a bunch of issues and gave feedback to the latest uh, weeklies and asked a bunch of questions. Um, I also kicked off the OKR planning for next quarter. That's pretty much what I've done um, last Friday. Any questions for me? All right, no questions. So let's go to the next one. Ashing Brain, also known. Oh, Alex is not here. He shared the update with us. Okay, so next one is Jacob. Uh, yeah, so last week um, fixed an issue with multi format that was prohibiting uh, TCP over DNS. Um, also released support, uh, release of the TCP library. Um, so we can now dial over DNS. So, yay. Um, we also did a release, or not a release, there's a bunch of PRs open in some of the data store stores. Uh, it's blocked by the interface data store PR uh, and getting merged and released. Um, David and uh, Friedel are the only one who have access to publish that right now. Um, but that fixes an issue where we're not using consistent error codes. And so a bunch of different places in the in JSIPFS, we're checking to see if the repo is not created yet, then create it. So if we're not getting the key initially, do that. But the problem is we're getting several of the libraries are returning different types of error codes. So those PRs all unify that. Um, also been working on the connection um, state machine for libp2b switch. That's going well. I'm working on the listener side of that so that that all kind of gets more sane and that should help fix issues where we have it right now where a dialer can actually request an unencrypted connection from a listener. Um, so that should fix all of that. Um, PR2, I just released an update for WebRTC star today to fix an issue um, with the Chrome leaking RTC peer connections. So that error won't get thrown anymore. Um, it obviously doesn't fix the core issue, but we shouldn't see that in the console logs anymore. Um, and then uh, this week, I'm gonna do an update. Lars and I agreed on some timeout stuff for the delegated routing, um, so we don't hold connections open to the gateway. So I'm gonna work on getting those in. Uh, work on the finishing of the connection FSM, and then I'll be working on the Q3 retrospective and Q4 OKR planning for Libby2B. That's it. Any questions? 
Sweet. A lot of uh, updates. What was the motivation to then find the bug on DNS support with um, multi other support for having TCP over DNS? Are we now dialing to the gateways using DNS? Yeah, so there are people dialing to gateways over DNS. Um, also, people who are dialing to their own um, nodes. So, like, for example, Mike was going and setting up his own IPFS node and then dialing to that, but he couldn't dial over to it. Um, so there was several requests for that. So it was a pretty quick fix, so I just went ahead and did it. Sweet. Uh, I'm also curious about the WebRTC fix. Is that related with the fact that um, when we add multiple WebRTC connections, like the browsers would keep a, a bunch of RTC peer connections around and therefore like exhaust a lot of resources? Does that mean yes. that now we are in way better shape, like better condition? No, it doesn't mean we're in a better condition. So it's basically catching right now. What happens is anytime that error is getting thrown, it's getting thrown all the way up the stack because we're not catching it. So all we're doing now is just catching that. So it doesn't solve the problem. Um, that should get better. Hopefully, um, we should be able to improve that when we work on the, the switch FSM stuff. Because I'm trying to do some better reusability there. Um, but yeah, it's not fixed. It's just preventing that from getting thrown. Understood. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions for Jacob? All right. Thank you so much for the update. Um, um, I'll keep note that I'm. Uh, I'll check the interface status or pull requests. Um, and if other people have the time to review those pull requests, that would be great, because then I can just go there and like more easily uh, go through the merge and release dance. I think Alan and Vashko have already looked at it and approved it. It's just waiting for somebody to merge and release. Sweet. Okay, I'll try to do it tonight then. Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay, next up in the line that is also present is Vasco. Vasco, go for it. Uh, hello. Uh, so first, uh, regarding the Jacob's PRs, I reviewed the first one, but I will review the other ones once the first gets merged. So uh, last week I worked mostly on IPNS over pub so and a little bit about the DHD interop. Uh, I released uh, a new version of that store pub sub for being used for IPNS over pub sub. I created the PR for GSIPFS with the full implementation of IPNS over pub sub and uh, some PRs uh, li uh, lighter like uh, CTL PR for the IPNS tests and uh, then I found uh, a problem with uh, uh, interop for IPNS and I created also a PR for JSIPFS and uh, interop tests mostly for IPNS and PubSub. So I'm blocked in uh, a lot of PRs right now. Uh, all of them need to uh, review and release, some of them uh, regarding IPNS interop and others IPNS over PubSub. I detailed uh, what uh, each one needs to be done and for the next week uh, well i want to fix all the feedback available for the block prs and i will continue working on dht interop and the interop test for ipns over pub so for the dht interop uh, i have a call with uh, cole to discuss some things uh, about the dht and uh, i already found a bug and i have a work in progress pr uh, with some tests and uh, that's it for me. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so there's a lot of things here, um, especially on the DHT interop, there's like that massive PR on just IPFS. Getting that rebased will enable you to run the interop tests on IPFS interop for the DHT, which then like, will help you debug a lot of things there. Um, uh, John uh, had some pretty good results when he, he tested it himself, so uh, we need to just basically spend a couple of hours revising that PR um, and, and retesting if at IPFS level, the interop at least is looking better or not. That might help your work as well, Vasco. The other thing is really like this IPNS over PubSub, it's like super exciting. Um, I, I saw these pull requests and I, I need to understand better like what was the decision to like push down the broadcast of the IPNS records by creating a data store over PubSub, because what this means, like anything that you store to the data store, you are now broadcasting over PubSub, which is not necessarily the behavior that we want. We want just like to broadcast the IPNS records specifically. And so 
uh, I think like it would be good for the two of us to just like spend like 15, 20 minutes just going through the design of that because uh, like the code is probably going to be the same. Like the, the logic is just like, it should be the IPNS subsystem that understands that like in order to publish, it should be publishing through PubSub. And when it receives a record, then it should store on a data store and use the, sto the data store as a canonical repository, but not the data store control what gets posted to the network or not. Um, so it should be just a simple change. I just want to check in with you. Um, just one thing, the data store pops up thing is not a data store and it receives the local repo data store. What it does is to have the same interface like the put and get uh, functions in order to allow uh, from the outside to use the tiered data store, which uh, will allow us to use uh, the DHT and the PubSub at the same time with only the single put and get. So either my connection cut or your audio cut a little bit, so I just like heard off of that. Um, yeah. If you have those notes, maybe you can like send me the link or the diagram, because that, then I can like just like page in way faster, and we don't have to steal everyone's time here. Okay, I will uh, contact you. I think. Sweet. Thank you. Awesome. Any other questions for Pashko? All right. Let's go next. Alan Shaw. Hello, it's me. Uh, <laughs> Cool, uh, so what did I do last week? Last week, uh, at the beginning of the week, uh, I released JS IPFS 0 0.32 finally. It took a while, but it, um, it finally went out the door, um, including blog posts and everything, so uh, that's good. Um, then, so I basically spent a lot of the rest of the week kind of looking, uh, looking at issues, merging some things that I, I was then able to, um, uh, but I was also trying to work on the CID base stuff, which I've got a, a lot, a lot further with. Um, about I guess halfway through the week, I um, I saw that there was a um, so Kyle had requested like a tool for uh, like just general purpose sort of CLI based CID wrangling. So like uh, just convert your CIDs to base thirty two, um, list out properties, do some formatting if you need to. Uh, pull out bits of CIDs and things like that. Um, and so there's a pull request for Go IPFS adding this, um, and it was relatively easy to set up something um, in JS. So um, I added that um, as a like it's a it's like a, it can be a standalone CLI tool you just install, um, but it also because it's just all YARGs based, it, it integrates pretty easily with JS IPFS. So that's that's kind of there's a pull request for adding that to JS IPFS. Uh, as well, it's just a simple CLI tool, kind of to smooth over the um, the transition of to base thirty two v one stuff. Um, I guess if I were to summarize that. Um, so yeah, I made a bit of progress with CID base, um, adding an option to uh, to to output CID base thirty two or whatever base you like. Um, I've got a pull request. Um, open um i guess it would be cool to get some feedback on it i've taken an approach which uh, is probably uh, a bit controversial because it, it it basically introduces breaking changes such as like uh where a hash w was returned as a string it would now be returned as a cid so um i'm not entirely sure that's the best way to go and looking at the uh the the go discussion for the same thing i think they decided it wasn't the best way to go as well. So um, that's relatively easy to, to back out and, and, uh, and go, go the way they, they wanted to go. But the detail is in the pull request. So please take a look if you're at all interested. Um, so yeah, that was me this week, basically. Um, I am blocked on Jenkins most of the time, this guy. Um, he's uh, yeah, I, like I don't know. Jenkins takes up a lot of my time at the moment, re rerunning builds, um, and when it fails because of something that isn't the JS code tests failing legitimately because of something wrong, um, that's just a massive time sink for me. Um, and so, like npm, just in npm installing at the start of things uh, and run, workers running out of space, which happens almost every day. Is uh, is kind of annoying, 
and then compounded by like there's I think there's a job that runs every evening to clean up some uh, some uh, some stuff on the the workers, but um, that causes like a branch indexing thing, which basically runs all of the outstanding pull requests. So anything you had passing before that was waiting to be merged um, could possibly become like not passing because uh, because it might fail the second time around. So that's um, that's kind of annoying for me. Um, but like in, on the whole, um, I think I feel like the JS IPFS tests are um, are feeling a lot more stable now. There's a couple of errors which I'm seeing kind of frequently, like uh, database not open is one. Um, but the like other than that, um, it seems to be npm issues or um, workers out of space issues. So so that's good. Um, this week, I wanted to work more on the CID based stuff, get that finished. I need to create interrupt tests to check that the block store can get CID, uh, get data out with CIDs that you give to it from either version, um, you know, regardless of what CID you put it in with. Um, and then I wanted to get on with the implementation for being at JS IPFS being able to do that. That's all I have to say. Your questions may be asked now. Any questions? Cool. Thank you for the update. Um, uh, my question, is, so everything over here. Uh, the other question I really have is, given these problems from Jenkins that are like, like stealing our time from development, uh, do we feel that the developer experience team is aware of these problems and I'm on top of it? Is there like an estimate that? day time for them to be fixed, or should we be trying to help to make, to get these problems solved? Uh, I, I don't get the feeling that it it's being looked at with an incredible amount of urgency, um, just because I, I've opened a lot, bunch of issues. I'm, uh, I'm usually on ISC saying something if I can. Uh, if I notice something up is up, I will open an issue. Um, but I'm not really sure of a way of, because uh, like it's basically Victor, right? Uh, and I, I am aware that he's super tight with time, so um, you know I, I don't want to just be complaining at him the whole time. So. Um, yeah, I don't know what the I don't know if this is like the situation we're in now is a lot better than it was before. I wasn't really involved with the project um, when it we weren't using Jenkins that that heavily. So I don't know if this is like way better or if this is worse or or what. But it's all I know is that it's it is sucking up a whole bunch of my time um, that I'd rather be doing uh, development work or reviewing or merging. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, like in, I believe like the situation is going for multiple months now. And so uh, I totally get like it's not about like complaining. It's just about like creating a way for the team to know if issues are being handled, prioritized, and if there is um, any hopes of getting it done soon. Because if the situation is completely out of hand, because um, like a couple of people cannot handle all the tasks, then that is fine. It's just like something that we have to acknowledge, and like it means like we have to like increase the team or like find some more capacity in some other way um in rather than trying to hope that like capacity appears from somewhere and solves all our, our issues in one week so that, that's what i was trying to like get a sense of cool thank you any other questions for alan uh, Is it better? Um, my audio is on. So, oh, you didn't hear anything that I said? Hugo's next, and go ahead, Hugo. You can go now, Hugo, or are you without voice? Hi, hey guys. Can you hear me? Uh, so, um, I have the experimental I have uh, finished for a more general review. I al already added the, a couple of portions to the pull requests, either on the API side or the uh, IPFS side. Uh, so this uh, previous week, 
I spent a lot of time just making all the test pass, um, handling a couple of issues because uh, some of the tests uh, weren't really passing on the current implementation. Because I think when the tests run, they only run connected to Go daemons and not JS daemons. And so, but this this uh, feature is only for JS at least for now. Uh, but yeah, the two pull requests are finished. Uh, uh, hopefully, you can get to to them as quick as possible. Uh, and they for you, David. I don't know if you ever look at it already. Uh, you can now um, add uh, like big files, big data uh, in the two ways. Either the normal way, which is like non chunked, just uh, one request with the whole data. Um, you can go as, as far as your browser can handle it. And one of the main issues I have right now is defining which is the max value for the, the daemon to handle, like the max bytes for one request for the body. That request that's on the on the podcast too, so you can give feedback on that, and also you can add uh, like theoretically unlimited data uh, in a chunk way, uh, and you can define the chunk size and just add away, and it will hopefully work out well and add the data you want. Uh, I'm blocked in a couple of things. I have a small small stuff related to docs for the IPFSD CTL. Also, things regarding the stream HTTP library. HTTP. Um, I had to like um, fix a couple of stuff in there to make the non chunk uh, ads work that what was what uh, was making Chrome crash when you like uploaded a uh, hundred megabytes uh, but uh, regarding service workers there's still stuff uh, that needs to be fixed on the stream HTTP and to figure out how to do it because I was thinking about just making a new one based on on, on the, the that package but then I found out that the maintainer is working with us on protocol labs and stuff so i'm gonna probably like try to uh, contribute back but that will take more time so i need to figure out oh, what to do with that and next week or this week i'll try to release the ctl about with the uh, jsapfs.io with uh, the embedded examples and also the okr stuff that's it Sweet. Okay, so I believe I pretty much I got the whole gist of it. Although I had like some cuts, like something is weird with audio and my headphones today because I can always see you guys moving. The video is perfect. It just seems it cuts. So I'll follow up on these pull requests and like read the context. Uh, some work on on getting IPFS API and just BFS like to support adding very big files. Um, my concern, and I believe I posted this in one of the issues, is make sure, like, if you have to change things on the HTTP API to make it uh, support, like, adding large files in multiple chunks, make sure, like, that the Go IPFS HTTP API also understands what that means. Um, so that, like, we continue with having the interop. Um, but other than that, yeah, like, I'll, I'll go through these pull requests and, 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 get the whole context. And, and yes, like John w works with us, so he created stream HTTP. Like he, if you need these insights, like just, just ping him. Um, you, you are cutting. Cutting uh, again? Oh. Uh, okay, so pull up through. <laughs> I'll follow up through, yes. Yeah, the question the interop test harness and kind of what what that was going to be 
uh, and I found, or I was looking through the the IPFS interopt uh, repository, and, and a lot of that is, is JavaScript, which kind of makes sense. Um, but I was curious if the original, uh, when this OKR was kind of set up, if we want to continue down the route of using JavaScript, if one of the ideas coming out of this or, or if there wasn't really a, a set pathway down for this uh, IPTB interrupt test harness. Um, so was, I'll, I'll probably create an issue. Is this working? Can you hear me? Uh, create an issue to kind of get some feedback on this, but I was, um, I'm just kind of curious. I have some stuff set up that. Hello. Okay, people can hear me now? Yeah, very good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, okay, we have three minutes left. Uh, I'll try. I'll Hugo. I'll follow up through the pull request. Um, I'll check you with you through and like review. I give the pull request in the comments there and get the full context and give you feedback there. Any other questions for Hugo? <laughs> we were right. Okay. So we have, two was in the of this we have three minutes left. Sorry for the Wi-Fi difficulties today. Uh, Travis, you're next. Yeah, okay. Um, so I was, I was just kind of talking about uh, plugins are merged, all that stuff's working. Um, they're missing some documentation, which I'm gonna work on <laughs> work on in uh, between a couple things. Um, but currently I wanted to get some more information on uh, the actual IPPT interrupt test harness and what we wanted that to actually look like. What was the expectations on, on that bit? I have worked uh, up some, uh, uh, worked on it a little bit in, in Go, but I noticed everything in the interrupt currently is all written in JavaScript. And I was curious if we wanted to move more move towards a way of using IPPT as a way to manage starting nodes to replace in a way the uh, IPFS daemon controller or if we wanted to move down a route of having a more typed-based uh, testing uh, harness. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I think <laughs> we're probably going to need to uh, table that offline. I know there's been a lot of discussions. We had some discussions at the Berlin meetup around what we want to do for interop and obviously with the interop tests as they are now like the go team is just not going to use that because it's all in javascript so the more we can do to change that over so that iptb is running that whatever that means um i think that is the better way to go okay cool that's that's the way i'm kind of working so i'll continue working on that and continue down that path um and and get something up we can talk about awesome that's that's me Oh, VMX, Walker, super fast. Yeah, super fast. Uh, I worked on drafting, and I will work on drafting. Uh, and then a bit a longer update is that I have, have the first public um, repository, which like a small type, which at least for a good retriever file, which is super exciting, but basically it has the whole, like, of the whole thing. And yeah, I keep working on it. Yep, yeah, that's all. All right, is my audio back? I hope so. <laughs> um, so, Travis, I didn't hear your update, but I know that you have exciting things. I would love to see a demo. Uh, Send it for Volker. Very exciting on the graph sync updates. Uh, it is a complete surprise to me. Awesome. Um, I also want to see a demo. And yeah, we are on time. Again, thank you all, everyone, for the update and for bearing with the technical difficulties. Um, lots of still exciting stuff to work on, a lot of stuff getting shipped, like right at the end of the quarter. Um, let's get it all done and call it a successful quarter. So, yeah, I'll try to follow up to all the pull requests and asks and review and do the merges that I needed. Uh, if I don't do it today or tomorrow, definitely ping me on IRC or email so that I make sure to pay attention to what you need so that you can continue working. All good? Sweet. Okay. Thank you all for coming. Have a great week. Enjoy. Go team.